Yes, here we are again. Um, I'm going to talk about the prediction interval this time. Uh, as you can see, I just left off uh, from the previous video all the calculations doing the confidence interval for the mean. But now we're going to do the prediction interval for the response. So the, the reason I left everything uh, where it was is because it's very much the same thing that we're going through. I just want to talk about what a prediction interval is. Um, a prediction interval is when we want to predict the outcome of one new experiment. In our case, we want to do a, we want to do a, um, we want to conduct the chemical um, process at, let's say, pH 2.3 what yield would be uh, expected from that. Um, so you, you might think, well, that's what we computed last time. Well, uh, not exactly, because in the previous video, we computed the, the interval of the mean response. So in effect, we were doing a lot of experiments at pH 2.3, and then we computed the average of the yields. And that was that quantity was what we were making the interval for. This time we're making a prediction interval for one single uh, outcome. Um, and the method is very much the same. We have a little bit of different notation. So the prediction interval, let's just make it a 95% prediction interval for the response. So we'll call that Y0. So now we're predicting this thing here instead of that thing, the mean. And that's the, the center of that interval is, well, that's the model prediction. So we'll just call that y naught hat. And that's this value here. So it's computed in, in the exact same way as the, the mean. So beta naught plus beta one times x naught and then we add and subtract um, some variation here and again we need the t quantile so that's the same thing again with n minus two degrees of freedom and then we need the standard error of the um, response and the standard error is almost the same as for the mean. We have the variance estimate, and then we have a, a one term here, which wasn't present in the previous, but the rest is the same. So we get x naught minus x bar squared over the deviation sum squared. So that's the only difference. Um, yeah. Since it's the only different, let's give it another color here. This, well, that wasn't a different color. What happened here? Like that. This thing here, this one here, that's the only difference uh, between the two standard errors. So why is the prediction interval, I mean, we can all agree that this one here makes the standard error a greater number. Oh, I forgot a bracket. Let's just correct that like that. This uh, term here makes the standard error for the prediction interval greater than it was for the mean response. Why is that? Well, to explain that, I'll do a different example, which is a little more tangible, I hope. So let's say we measure a lot of heights of a group of people. We measure their heights and their weights. And we might expect that there is some um, relation between those two. S probably they have more or less a positive correlation so that if you're a tall person, then you weigh more than if you're a short person. But it's not, you know, it's not a perfect winner um, relation here. So we can, we can uh, do a linear fit to this model here. Or to this data here, maybe it looks something like that. Now imagine that I 
go into a room in which there are, let's say, 50 people all having the height 1.72 meters. Now, I could try to predict two things using my model. I could predict the, uh, the mean height given that I know everyone in that room has, sorry, not the mean height, the mean weight. Of course, Y is the weight here and X is the height. Um, so I, I, I'll try to use my model to predict the mean weight of those 50 people in that room all having this height here. And I can compute like a confidence interval for that. We did that in the previous video and it, that's done in this way here. Using this standard error here. Or I could try to predict one single weight, that is one single person's weight, one of the 50 people's weight. Um, I know that that person has this height, but uh, what is his weight? My model could make a prediction for that, but that would be harder to predict. So the interval would be somewhat more smeared out. It would be a wider interval. Um, so I'm trying to predict one person's weight in this case. That's harder. Why? Well, um, because I could be unfortunate to get a person that weighs a lot compared to his height or a person that weighs very little compared to his height. Uh, or I could get something in the middle. When I do the mean here, I'm kind of averaging out those extremes. So that makes it easier to predict what the mean outcome in this case, weight will be than one single outcome. And that's qualitatively accounting for this term here, one. That's what makes predictions of single outcomes harder than predictions of means. But doing the calculation is very much the same. We can go back to the uh, Excel sheet and um, just modify our formula a little bit here so we did we um, did compute the uh, confidence interval for the mean here so now I just want to change my notation to y hat and the formula for the standard error um, all I need to do is to include a one here so I'll do that one plus and you see immediately that changed the the interval quite a bit now we can only say that with 95 percent confidence uh, the yield will be between 56 and 62 roughly 57 maybe and 62.5 so the the prediction interval is quite a lot wider than the than the confidence interval for the mean and I of course I should change this to prediction interval here but calculated in much the same way 